Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Read that for me. Good fight, okay. Fight the good fight. Lay hold on eternal life. Ooh, there you go. Whereunto you thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession. Read, read it again, Brother Lee. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. When you're in this race, you keep your eyes on the prize. Don't take your eyes off Christ. Because here's what you're going to get at the end. So the Bible says, 6 and 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. You know what you're fighting for? You're fighting for eternal life. That's what you're fighting for. If you lose everything and keep your eye on eternal life, you can gain all of it again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on now. Whereunto thou art also called mm -hmm. and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Before many witnesses. Amen. Our last scripture, and I'm going to let you sleepy people go home. <laughs> Hebrews 12. One through three. I know we're all tired. I know you're tired. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But it's good. We're fighting. When we're here, we're fighting a good fight. That's right. We're here. We're fighting a good fight of faith. I know he didn't want you to come, but guess what? I'm here. And I'm going to get what I came That's for. That's right. Hallelujah. I refuse to give up. I refuse to let Satan win. I refuse to let him have anything that belonged to That's me. Right. He's a liar and That's the right. truth is not in him. That's if right. God said it's mine, then guess what? It's I'm mine. keeping it. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. If God said I can have it, guess what? I'm going to take it. That's right. But I know I have to fight for it. That's right. So the Bible says fight a good fight of faith. Contend. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Fight. Come on, Brother Lee. Hebrews 3 and what, Pastor? 1. Hebrews 12. Okay. 1 sorry. through 3. That's our last scripture. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12, okay. 1 through 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, seeing we also are comp compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us lay aside every weight. Come on now. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. Mm -hmm. And let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. All right, so if you are in a race and you are running to win a prize, why would you carry extra stuff with you? I mean, you, 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 when you're running, you want to be as light as possible, right? Mm -hmm. So why are you going to carry a great big coat, hip boots, all kinds of things that will slow you up? So God is saying... Those things that would hinder you, you need to get rid of. Come on now. Let us lay aside every weight. What is weight? Sin that so easily besets us. Things that we shouldn't be doing, that's a weight. It'll cause you to slow up in your race. It'll cause you to lose your race. Worry is a weight. Yeah. It'll cause you to lose your weight, your, your race. So he said, this weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before you. So there is a race that's set before each and every one of us, right? Okay, so when you enter into a race, don't carry a lot of extra luggage with you in this race. Burdens, the Bible says, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. That's a weight. If you got a burden, then take it to the Lord. Some of us take it to the Lord and we get up. 
We pick it right back up again and we carry it home. But you need to leave your burdens. Get, Jesus said, the Bible said, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them. So you don't even have to carry around the weights if you don't want to. You carry it around because it's your choice. Because Jesus said, give them to me. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Yes. For my yoke is easy. Mm -hmm. And my burden is light. Yes. So if you take on the yoke of Jesus, you can win this race. If you take on, give, give everything to God. And I know it's hard we're in this flesh. We just need more grace. We need grace. If we expect to win this race, we need grace. And God knows, you know, God can't, uh, he don't, he, he can't depend upon us. The only thing that he can depend upon is Christ that lives inside yes. of us. Yeah. He can depend upon his son. Yeah. But he can't depend upon us because we're in our flesh. So, so what he does, he puts his son in you and then he can depend yeah, upon his else. son. Yeah. So then it's not about you, it's about his son. Yeah. Yeah. Even when you are doing good, and you think, oh man, that was a good job. That was Christ. <laughs> he can't depend upon us for nothing. The only thing he recognized is his son on the inside of him. <laughs> That's all. He can't depend upon because we're in our flesh. Yeah. And our flesh changed from one moment to the next. So you say, well, God, you can depend upon me. No, he can't. <laughs> he can't depend upon you. Why? Because you are in your flesh. But guess what? If his son lives inside of you, he can depend yeah, upon his yeah. son. <laughs> but you have to allow Christ to be in charge. When I come up here and preach, he can't depend upon me. But when Christ, who lives inside of me, speaks through me, then he said, well, I can depend upon my son. Right. Now, uh, Pastor Carolyn, she might say she'll do it, but she might not do what I want her to do. She might not live the way I want her to live. But if my crisis, if my son is in her, then I can stand back and say, well, look at my son. <laughs> it ain't about Carolyn. It's about the son. And I can't do nothing. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So when I step up here, then I should decrease and let Christ increase because what I say don't melt to a pile of beans. But what Christ can say through me can change somebody's life. But just my speaking don't do nothing. But Christ, who lives inside of me, he doeth the work. Amen. My God, my, Jesus. Nothing 